What's up bros and welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and today we're going to be talking about putting a person on a green screen into a scene that you've made in Cinema 4D. Now uh, before I get any sort of comments on uh, the actual compositing in this, this is not about the compositing. This is just about the technique. So um, this footage I took is pretty bad and it's footage I took of Matt and he is uh, pretty much out of focus. You don't really want to do green screen footage with, a, with an iPhone. But I was on my way out the door, and I was like, hey, Matt, why don't you walk across this green screen with no lights for me? So I took this footage. It didn't even focus correctly. But you can see this is Matt walking. And this is just about um, how you interact uh, with this type of stuff in cinema, you know, you could export this and you could bring this plate in as a texture, but it's not really going to composite well. And you're not going to have a lot of control over it in After Effects or in Cinema 4D like you would in After Effects. And so what I'm going to teach you how to do is how to use a piece of footage like this as kind of a stand in rather than actually doing the compositing. Now I'm going to do a quick key, and you can use key light. Um, I'm just going to pull a really rough key out of this green, because I just want to get a little bit uh, of a reference file here. This does not have to be perfect, nor will it be, because my iPhone does not take the best green screen video. All right, so here's my real rough uh, kind of garbage key that I have here just for reference. And I want to export this as a QuickTime with an alpha. So I'm going to do losses with alpha. I'm going to save that into my Cinema 4D directory uh, in the text folder. So here I've got my project cinema 4d folder in the text folder and I'm going to call this matte key I'm going to render that real quick so we're getting this key here with the alpha we're going to bring this in as a plate in cinema 4d there's that lovely sound and in cinema I have a little Micro Machines gas station that I built. Um, this project will also be available and this model will be available if you'd like to have a copy of this to follow along and so here's the model got a little car here and first thing I'm going to do is create a plane now my plane needs to have negative Z orientation here so that it's straight up. It's way too big. So I'm going to make the width and height uh, 1600 by 900. And that is because, go away Adobe, I don't want to update. That is because my footage is 16 by 9 and then I'm just going to scale it down. That way I have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio on this card here. Now I'm also going to make a separate uh, texture here along with my textures that already exist and I'm going to go into um, I guess it doesn't matter if it's color or luminance. Let's just do color for now and go into uh, the project that you're working on, wherever you're saving that, and go into the Cinema 4D folder and then pull out your key. I'm bringing out my matte key. 
I'm going to drop that onto this card here and you'll see matte on black. First thing I'm going to do is turn off uh, specular because it looks pretty bad. Okay, now you need the alpha. So, under alpha, I'm going to check that on. Go to alpha and I'm going to pull the same exact file. This will pull an alpha channel. And I'm going to bring my card up so that we're aligned here. Now, if you have kind of a low res thing going on, you can go to um, the editor tab of your material and kind of up the uh, texture preview size. I'm going to try, that's pretty good, 1024 by 1024. And what I'm going to do is I want to align his feet when they're on the ground with the ground that I have in here. Um, another thing you'll want to do is make sure in this editor tab you have animate preview one so that you actually see uh, the preview going on. And lastly what we're going to do as well under the color and alpha uh, tabs if you click down on this texture deal here and go to animation you want to make sure that the timing is set to exact frame. Same thing on alpha go down to texture animation tab make sure that the timing is exact frame okay now when we scroll through you can see his feet and you'll notice here that that's not aligned so you, what you have to do is go to your front view because this is the definitive straight on shot to make sure that your feet, Matt's feet, are on the ground. So I'm going to look at this front view but I'm going to adjust it on this other view here. And so his foot is on the ground and you can see it's aligned here with the bottom of the gas station. That is where the ground is. Now there is a little bit of perspective. You'll notice that. See, like his left foot and his right foot are in two different places. And he's actually kind of walking on an angle because my footage wasn't perfectly aligned. But for uh, practical purposes for this, this will be totally fine. Um, we're going to make him a little bit smaller as well. Go ahead and bring this back in. All right. So I've got him pretty much aligned. If you were actually shooting this uh, for production, I'm sure your camera would be perfectly level and probably not an iPhone like mine was. But this is good as a stand-in because that's the whole point of this. Now if I were to hit render, you can see what happens here. You've got him as a stand-in which is nice but you wouldn't want to use this for compositing because what if when you're done you want to work on the key a little more or what if you want to change the lighting a little bit or the the uh, color or the brightness and contrast of the footage it would be kind of baked into the animation and that would be tough to have to go back and redo that bring your texture back into cinema and then re-render the whole thing again you want control over this card over this plate so what I'm gonna do is set up a, a quick camera move and I'm gonna have the camera move slightly around the gas station now we gotta keep in mind that what we're doing here is not motion control or anything like that so we don't have a perspective where we could go around Matt but we, what we are going to do is just do slight parallax and you won't notice the perspective change that much on this flat card so I'm going to create a camera I'm going to go to frame 0 and I'm going to keyframe that camera then I'm going to go to my last frame 
which is 150 in this case. And we're going to rotate around. Click back on my camera, set that keyframe. So you can see what's happening here. He's walking through the scene. So how do you get this footage with this scene into After Effects? That is what we're concentrating on today. Well, first thing you do is you go to your plane you created, which actually I'm going to name this Matt. I'm going to add a tag, and that tag is going to be the external compositing tag. And if I click on the external compositing tag, I can actually give it a name here. And in this case, I'm going to call it Matt. There are some other options, like where your anchor point is and uh, color, stuff like that. We're not going to change any of that. It really doesn't matter. And there we go. Um, it's time to hit render. I'm going to save. I'm going to turn off matte because we don't want to render matte. Going to, I'm going to save this in my Cinema 4D render folder for this project. I'm just going to call it render. And my multi-pass, I'm not really worried about right now. Um, I've got it saving out depth and some motion vector and object buffers, but you really don't have to do that. I just like to, to do those three by default, just so I have them just in case. Um, I've got anti-aliasing to best. I'm outputting 1920 by 1080. I'm doing 150 frames. Uh, it would be nice to turn on global illumination and ambient occlusion right now, but I would prefer to just render this pretty quick. So for this case, that's um, all we really need. I'm going to go ahead and hit render. And we'll watch this render out, and I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, now that's rendering nicely right here, and uh, it's a pretty crude level setup, but it will do for this demonstration. Um, I'm going to go to my finder. Now, if you are using a PC, this won't be your finder. This will be like Windows Explorer or whatever they call it, wherever your file system is. Now, if you go to where your Cinema 4D is located, in my case on the Mac, it's in the Maxon folder. And if you go to your Cinema 4D folder, you'll find something called Exchange Plugins. And in Exchange Plugins under After Effects, you've got two sets of plugins. You have um, an importer for uh, OS X and Windows, and you have Cinema 4D format for OS X and Windows. This is how you can get things from After Effects into Cinema and Cinema into After Effects. Now, I won't go into the details of how to install these, although it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you can find tons of tutorials on how to do this online. But what you want to do is make sure that your Cinema 4D, I'm sorry, that your After Effects has the importer in it so that you can bring in um, scenes from Cinema 4D into After Effects. Once you have that set up, then you'll be ready to bring in this scene. So this is still rolling here, still rendering. And in the meantime, I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to hit Command B and go to Save. Now, in Compositing Project File, down here, you've got some information. And we're going to export this 3D uh, data out of here. There are other ways to do this. I know that Cineware is a, is a good way to sometimes get some of this uh, 3D information and some of this camera information, but not everybody has Cineware. Not everybody has the newest version of everything. And honestly, uh, I don't know. I'm not certain if you can um, uh, bring in your external compositing tags with Cineware or not yet. Hopefully, if not, that's something they do soon. So... 
in a compositing project file, I'm going to turn on include 3D data, and that is because I want the 3D information of the camera and uh, like these this tag that we just did, the external compositing tag. I want to bring that uh, into After Effects and have that information to work with. And I'm going to save the project file and I'm going to just save it in my Cinema 4D directory as the same name as what my project is right now just so I remember um, if I'm doing multiple versions of this what stage this is in. Uh, right now I'm on increment 3 save of my project personally so I'm just going to save it as the same name but you'll see it will give you the AEC extension. Now that's saving out. Sometimes it takes uh, a second or two. It might hang, but just wait it out and it will be saved. And the beauty of cinema is that we are uh, exporting, in this case, uh, TIFF files, a TIFF sequence. So we can start working with these files before it's even done rendering. So I'm just going to keep that going in the background here. I'm going to move over to After Effects. And I want to input import uh, that AEC file that we just made. So I'm going to go back to my Cinema 4D directory and there is that AEC file and I'm going to bring that in. And you'll see a render folder or it's going to be called whatever the name of your render was, in my case render. And so far I've only got 48 frames but you'll be able to see what it looks like if I bring that into a new composition you can see it moving here um, the other thing that it does is it already creates a comp for you with a whole bunch of stuff in it like your lights and your image sequence from the project and your camera and you'll notice what's happening here which is what I love is let me zoom in here. As frames are being finished in the background in Cinema 4D, this little empty space keeps moving. And if I want to fill in the blanks and show the new uh, pictures in the image sequence, I can just drag that out. And there's another one. And so on. So you'll see this progressing as we're working. And I, I love multitasking like that because I feel like I can actually get some work done rather than sitting around waiting for a, a render unless of course I want to surf reddit but that's a whole nother story and you notice here that I don't have my my stand-in of Matt and that's because I actually made a mistake and um, something to keep in mind hello cat something to keep in mind is that uh, we exported this without Matt uh, turned on because we turned him off for the render so I'm gonna turn him back on and just quickly re-export I'm just gonna save over the old one no biggie and I'm gonna just quickly re-import that here we go okay now you'll notice here here is a null stand-in for Matt and notice that it follows the scene exactly where we put him. And that's what's nice about having this back and forth is that a stand-in, you can move around and kind of place where you want, but then you don't have to worry about getting the, the look just right uh, in cinema and trying to render it out in cinema. Because if you were just trying to put somebody in the scene, even if you had the camera, even if you had the camera from cinema, it would be really hard to judge where in Z space he's going to be. And it will just look like he's sliding or his, his feet aren't hitting the ground right when he's walking. And so what I'm going to do is use this null that's created as a reference. And I'm going to bring in my footage of Matt. Okay. Now let me show you an example of what it would look like if you didn't have that uh, external compositing tag as a reference. I'll just go ahead and make Matt 3D. And already he's not in the right place. I'll 
she's huge. I don't even know what's going on here. It's just too hard to even figure out what's going on because you have no reference for where in this vast infinite 3D space where he is or where you could put him or anything. So it just becomes uh, guess and check. And even if you did scale him down and get him where he looked like he was in the scene, it just wouldn't look right. Uh, and there would be a lot of sliding. So what you do, I'm just going to delete and relay that file. What you do is you turn on 3D because you do want 3D, but then you go to your null because this has all of the information that you want to put on that uh, that QuickTime file of Matt on that plate. So I'm just going to click on Transform and hit Copy, and then I'm going to paste it back onto my Matt footage. Now the one thing that this does by default, which drives me nuts, is under Material, uh, not Material Options, I'm sorry, under Transform, it always puts the opacity to 0%. So I'm going to jack that back up to 100 here. Now, all, all of this stuff is in the exact same place. However, the difference here is that the scale is like way too high. So if you scale down, It's a little sensitive right here at the end. The scale of my scene is kind of screwy. So I've got these really, really low percentages. All right, so 0.2% scale in this particular case, which looking back, that was probably a bad choice. I'm going to put a key light on here, and I'm going to pull my key real rough key again some other point we'll talk about actual compositing but right away you can see what's going on here this is in the exact Z space that that stand-in was in Cinema 4D which means you're not going to get any slippage Perspective's going to look right for the most part, and that's that's what you want. So, say that you did this whole thing as a as a as a rough render in Cinema 4D. So you did this gas station, and you didn't like something about it, or you wanted to change something. You can go back and re-render it, and um, replace your image sequence, and Matt's going to stay right there, and he's walking. I'll do a quick uh, save because that's probably a good idea. Now I got a little something up here. I don't know what it is. Just gonna create a new mask. I'm gonna quickly uh, mask that out. I don't want to see that. So if you wanted to put in Matt's shadow, what would you do? Because I don't have a lot of shadows going on in this scene right now. Uh, but if I were to do a really nice like GI version of this, of course I would want you know, realistic looking shadows and stuff like that. Um, there's a ton of tutorials out there for doing shadow catchers and stuff. And that's how you would go about doing it. You do a shadow catch and you would bring that shadow into After Effects as a separate layer. And you would just line it right up. So you can see where this is going. This is just to show you the best way to do this compositing. You just don't want to put your green screen stuff in Cinema 4D. It makes much more sense to bring it in After Effects and have that full control over your elements, over people, over any sort of other effects you do. Even uh, if you have something like After Effects Essentials, those, you know, those action packs or whatever they have with um, dust and explosions or anything like that you really don't want to bring those in the cinema 
uh, that just becomes a pain and, and that also becomes very guess and check where you're going to be rendering over and over again. It's much easier to get your 3D stuff done in 3D, do your compositing stuff in a real compositing tool such as After Effects or even Nuke or something like that. So I'm just going to let the rest of this render out and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. There we go. Not too bad. So you can see there that that's what you need to do in order to start uh, developing a very complex multi-layered uh, um, uh, composited sequence. Now, um, some of the things that you would do beyond this, uh, first of all, you'd have to have good lighting, a good camera, like I said earlier, uh, and your green screen key. Uh, you would also want to spend a lot of time making that key look good. You would uh, possibly want to do uh, maybe some sort of HDRI setup to get your environment just right, depending on what you were doing. Probably some GI, probably some ambient occlusion. Then you're going to go in there and, and uh, work on shadows. Uh, depending on where your light is, you can go in and do some sort of light wrap and uh, make sure that uh, your your subject has light hitting him in the right angles uh, coordinated with where the lighting is in the scene. There's a lot of steps involved and um, so I'm hoping uh, in future tutorials we can start talking about some of that stuff as well and maybe Matt will do some of that uh, too. So until next time, um, we, we really appreciate it if uh, you could go ahead and just subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel because uh, we want to get enough subscribers so we can start doing some live video. Uh, check us out on Facebook. Check us out on brograph.com, of course. And uh, we've been hanging out on Reddit and the Cinema 4D subreddit as well. So uh, we'll see you there. Until next time, later bros.